There's a myth a driver got trapped in a car underwater with minutes to live. Another got shot by a sniper in the middle of a race. And one driver was almost killed because of a sewer cover? But it gets crazier because an F1 team started a myth by setting their entire garage on fire. See, back in 2012, during the Spanish Grand Prix, Pastor Maldonado was looking to win a race for Williams, something they hadn't managed to do in over eight years. And after passing Fernando Alonso to take the lead, it was looking like Pastor might just do the impossible. But then, while coming in for a pit stop, things took a turn for the worse. Williams messed up the pit stop, costing Pastor precious time. And with only a couple laps left, Pastor would have to pass Kimi Raikkonen's car to retake the lead. Now after passing Kimi and winning the race, Pastor felt on top of the world. And while celebrating, their entire garage went up in flames. And while some people thought some crazy lunatic set fire to the garage, it turns out one of the cars had an electrical problem which started the whole fire. Myth busted. Now that was just the first myth. There's a lot of crazier stuff later on in this video, like a driver who's crashed every single car he's ever driven, and an F1 team who pees on the their engines before a race. That's right, there's a myth these guys literally urinate all over their car's engines. See, in the 1980s, a weird rumor was starting to spread about BMW's Formula One team that BMW engineers were pissing on their engines because it helped the engines perform better. And when confronted with this, BMW just claimed it never happened, which makes sense because besides being just plain nasty, there's no way that would actually work. And while it only took a weird rumor to spark this myth, there's a rumor this driver ruined another driver's entire career. See, there's some speculation that Lewis Hamilton crashing into Alex Albon not once, but twice during the Brazilian and Austrian Grand Prix literally ruined his F1 career because not getting a podium in either of those races destroyed Alex's confidence, causing him to get dropped from Red Bull. But hey, it doesn't take ruining a driver's F1 dreams to start a myth because an F1 driver started a myth by just doing his job. Yeah, back in 1981, Carlos Reitman was just pit stop his Williams during the Belgian Grand Prix when, out of nowhere, a mechanic fell in front of his car. And with no way to swerve away from the body, Carlos could only watch in horror as his car ran over the mechanic. Now, rewinding back a week before, multiple teams had been protesting the horrible working conditions of pit crews. Minimum space, cars speeding by, and with a couple days till the race, the FIA had finally announced that a wider pit lane would be built for next year's race. But their decision would be too little too late, because while timing Carlos his car, the mechanic would slip off the edge of the outer pit wall, falling right into the path of oncoming cars. And with parked F1 cars on one side and engineers and mechanics on the other, Carlos was forced to run over the mechanic, fracturing his skull and killing him in the process. And while running over a mechanic was horrible, it doesn't compare to what happened to this F1 driver, who almost drowned after getting trapped in a sinking F1 car. But first, we need to talk about the myth that Formula 1 drivers aren't real athletes. Looking at the definition of an athlete, you need to be doing forms of physical exercise, something Formula One drivers do on a daily basis. From their necks, which need to withstand extreme pressure, to even Shaq proving that racing is extremely physical. I'm sitting. I'm sitting in the car. And we were out there, bro. My body was so sore. I was like, God damn. Myth bust. Now, while Formula One is already dangerous enough, there's a myth a sewer cover almost killed a Formula One driver. See, it was May 29th, 2016, and Jensen Button was out on the track practicing for the Morocco Grand Prix that would be held on Sunday. And with tensions high because of controversy over a recent driver's death, Jensen was doing anything he could to escape all those thoughts as he raced down the Morocco track. When, all of a sudden, a massive metal sewer cover would come hurling towards him at 140 miles an hour. Hour, completely destroying the front side of his car and coming inches from killing it. And this wasn't the last time it would happen, because during the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in 2019, a sewer cover would almost kill George Russell. George was practicing on the track when, unknowingly in front of him, Charles Leclerc would dislodge a sewer cover. And with no time to react, George would drive right into it, destroying his car and causing hundreds of thousands in damage and almost dying to the metal cover. It turns out that the Formula One cars drive so fast, they create enough pressure to lift those sewer covers and throw them right into the path of oncoming cars, almost killing several drivers in the past couple of years alone. And while hundreds of crashes and dangerous pit stops have also helped to ruin Formula One's reputation, there's an F1 driver that literally won a race during a pit stop and got three people fired in the process. See, during the British Grand Prix in 1998, Michael Schumacher decided he was going to win the race at any cost. But things weren't looking good because with
with less than a third of the race left to go, the first place driver Mika Hakkinen had built up such a huge lead, it was looking impossible for Michael to even get close. But then, Mika would spin off the track, doing a complete 360 and losing 10 seconds of his lead. And with the weather getting worse and other cars slipping around, an official did something that would change the results of the race forever. He called the safety car, which completely removed Mika's lead as Michael was able to catch up and later pass Mika. And with three laps to go, it was looking like Michael actually pulled off the impossible. When suddenly, he was hit with a 10 second penalty from a couple laps before. During the final lap of the race, while coming into the pit stop to wait out the 10 seconds, suddenly, the entire crowd of fans would stand up, start cheering, and applaud. And that is when Michael realized what happened. They were cheering because he had just subscribed to the channel. If you don't subscribe, Michael's gonna sneak into your house and slap you across the face. Anyways, that's when Michael realized he had unknowingly crossed the finish line while driving towards the Ferrari garage, winning the race in the pit lane. And if that wasn't crazy enough, the man's controversial win literally got three F1 officials fired. And while that was messed up, at least he didn't steal $60 million from a bank. Because there's a myth that Formula One's former CEO, secretly really robbed a bank. See, during the 1940s, a couple of gangsters would pull off the greatest bank robbery in Britain's history, stealing $66 million worth of money off a train. And Bernie Ecclestone, the former CEO of Formula One, would start to get accused of being involved in that robbery, as one of the escaped robbers would be seen in the VIP section at the Brazilian Grand Prix. But Bernie quickly shut down the controversy, saying there wasn't enough money on that train for it to be worth his while. I mean, weird flex, but okay. And while this controversial myth would sting Bernie, it was nothing compared to what happened during the 2008 World Championship. See, people claimed that Lewis Hamilton had cheated to win the 2008 World Championship. It was the final lap of the race, and Lewis Hamilton needed to finish fifth or higher to win his first championship ever. And with only a couple turns left, things were looking dark for Lewis, until mysteriously, a fellow driver would slow down completely, allowing Lewis to pass him on the last turn of the race, finishing fifth place and giving him the points to win his first ever world championship. But as it turns out, that driver only slowed down because it had started to rain, and he didn't have the right tires and didn't want to crash. And while he managed not to crash, there's a myth that a driver has crashed every single time he's driven a Formula 1 car. You heard that right. During the 1981 season, there's a myth that Andreas de Cesaris crashed in all 14 races. But in reality, those numbers were unrealistic. Andreas only crashed 7 times, sometimes retiring due to tire problems but at least he didn't almost drown after getting trapped in a sinking car. Because during the 1955 Monaco Grand Prix, while battling multiple drivers for the lead of the race, Alberto Ascari would make a mistake that would cost him his life. After passing Juan Fangio to take the lead, Alberto would mess up a turn and crash through the barriers into the ocean. And with the heavy car quickly sinking to the bottom of the ocean and pulling him with it, Alberto would spend multiple scary seconds trapped underwater before finally freeing himself and swimming to the surface. But the worst had yet to come because a couple days later, something horrible would happen. While taking a break to recover from the race, Alberto went against the doctor's orders and decided to test drive a car on the Monza track. And with the recent crash fresh in his head, on the third lap, Alberto's car would skid and flip twice into the air before landing on the side of the road, injuring Alberto so badly he'd die a couple minutes later. And while Alberto's death would scar Formula 1 fans, it was nothing compared to the myths about Ayrton Senna's death, such as the myth Ayrton would drive so close to walls that the text on his tires would disintegrate. But by far the craziest myth was the one of him getting shot by his sniper during the middle of a race. On May 1st, 1994, Ayrton was looking to win the San Marino Grand Prix because less than 24 hours before, one of his close friends, Roland Ratzenberg, would crash into a concrete barrier during the San Marino's qualifying practice, dying a couple hours later. And with Roland gone, Ayrton set his mind on one goal, win the San Marino Grand Prix and dedicate the win to his friend. And with his emotions riled up, Ayrton would race in the Grand Prix. But during the start of lap 7, something happened that would change history forever. During a turn, Ayrton's car would drive straight off the road and hit a concrete barrier at 130 miles an hour, damaging the car and throwing debris all over the road. And with the crowd on their feet, everyone was fearing the worst. As officials ran to the scene, Ayrton could be seen in the driver's seat not moving at all. And almost as quickly, a helicopter arrived and airlifted Ayrton
him to the local hospital, where he'd be pronounced dead just a few hours later, shocking the entire world. Now, there's a conspiracy out there that right before the crash, Ayrton was shot in the head by a sniper, instantly losing control of the car and crashing right into the barriers. Looking at his helmet, you can see what looks like a bullet hole, and the doctors claim that Ayrton had lost a lot of blood from a wound in the back of his head, adding evidence to the theory that he died from a bullet wound. And that's not the only conspiracy a driver was murdered, because there's a conspiracy drive to survive almost killed this Formula 1 driver. Click this video to find out what happened.